Here is João Hainetti. Today we're here at Soul Vision Studios for Drums Bonero. Uh, we're going to be talking about feathering and or beaters for the bass drum. So within the jazz community, especially amongst the bebop people, uh, feathering is a huge topic. Uh, people often talk about that all the greats have feathered their bass drums while playing this music and there's no reason not to believe it. Um, what some people nowadays or whenever they get in contact with jazz drumming and they are confronted with the topic of feathering, it's difficult to imagine how much coordination, not only amongst the limbs, but also sonically, dynamically, it is involved while playing the bass drum all quarter notes while the other all the other stuff is uh, is going on. So a feathering is a chance essentially playing very softly, almost unhearable quarter notes on the bass drum while you're swinging with other limbs. Um, Hi-hat on two and four most of the times, and then uh, the swing pattern or whatever swing right hand, leading hand it is, and then comping with the left, left hand. The problem then becomes what if you want to then comp also with the bass drum? How does that go with feathering? But let's go through steps. So the very first thing is to get the bass drum to be felt and not heard. Uh, this is one of the things that Gregory Hutchison stresses about for perhaps like We'll be, he's telling us for the past 20 years or so that I know of, that there are videos out there. And he always says, the greats have feather and you're not supposed to hear it. Even Ruben Rogers, his longtime friend and bass player, uh, talks about that in the bandstand, it does make a difference uh, if the drummer is feathering. You may not hear it in the, in the stage or the people out there in the audience will not hear it, but you'll definitely fear it in the bandstand. And I think this is just my theory. You maybe have to go take it to Gregory Hutchinson. It also gives a more grounded feel to the whole band as far as the quarter note goes. Because um, sometimes, especially depending on the room, um, just the right symbol alone perhaps will not provide the same groundness that along with the bass drum will provide. But this is just a theory. Um, I'm sure like the very, very greats were, were able to give a solid quarter note just by playing the quarter notes itself. But I myself, I also like to introduce just to, to mix in just a little bit of bass drum in there. Though you're not hearing it, you're just feeling it. At least that's how the legend goes. Um, all right, so the next problem that people encounter uh, besides the coordination is to then get it softer. It's actually the first problem that people usually get. You know, sometimes I get students coming in and they come from other styles of music where the bass drum is perhaps the leading instrument in a bandstand. Um, and so it's very difficult to get the bass drum super, super soft to the point where you're truly only touching barely the skin, this head, the head, and then getting away with it and then touching again. And that for all kinds of tempos. Obviously, the slower you get, there are more placement problems, but then the faster you get, there's more of a technique problem that may occur. So for me, uh, I, I started really noticing there's nothing that I found that hasn't been said already. There's nothing that will tell you now that perhaps other players from other generations or even with uh, more established players have already said. So the feathering discussion is already out there for you to consume. My true sense is just perhaps my own experience with the odyssey that is getting the bass drum to sound softly. Um, and for me, it was just that. I wasn't at home like practicing super softly. I wasn't really too much stressed about where the stroke was coming from, whether it was from the very tip of the feet or of the foot or from the uh, um, sort of wrist from the foot, you know what I'm saying? So like you're either motioning this side of the foot or the very top of the foot. I never th really thought about this, though I have recognized that I motion the foot like this. And I always play heel down when I'm doing this kind of stuff. Um, and so for me, um, I had to actually visually um, tell myself or uh, accompany myself to be able to see if I was feathery or not at the beginning. So what I would do, especially like in my apartment, I would just get the bass drum out with the, a normal beater 
and then see if I was touching and how often the or how great the distance between the head of the bass drum and the beater was. So what I would do is really try to, if you can follow on my bass drum, you know, I was, if I was doing too, if I was getting too much of a distance, then I would try to correct myself and to be as close as I can to the head. So, you know, I went from playing like this to going And depending on the beater, obviously you have a greater margin of error or force that you can utilize. Obviously the beater that, that I'm using here today is uh, by the name of Trickman and it has a bit of a cushion. So before the extra wood of the uh, beater touches the head, there's a bit of a cushion that helps you absorb the impact. If I get another beater, and this is where I actually started with, a more harder beater, like the usual stuff that we all begin with, then this is a great exercise. Also, the um, any quote I had, there's also a bit of a cushion. It's different, the touch is very different to the one with, um, with like the clear heads that sometimes I had to practice on. But yeah, I, I would practice 20 minutes at a time alone, sometimes with the metronome, sometimes just by myself, trying to get the distance between the beater and the head super, super clean, consistent, and very short. So I would go. Then becomes the question, where is the placement of the foot? Some people ask me if I have my foot like the Roy Hain style, which is perhaps more downwards on the paddle, or maybe the Eric Harlan, which seems to be sort of in the middle, but uh, just a tiny bit upwards. And to be honest, I really don't know. At the time that I was practicing this, I wasn't really paying attention, but sometimes when I do record myself, I notice how I do have a slightly Roy Haynes-ish positioning of my foot. And that may be a bit more difficult to get the feathering done, but you'll, you'll have to figure it out for yourself. I can't really help you with that <laughs> as much as I want to. Um, so yeah, just getting taking care of this. Now, the next problem that you will encounter um, is the coordination as far as dynamic goes, because as soon as you might be able to play the bass drum, now that you've conquered the feathering with the bass drum alone by itself, when the other factors come in, meaning the whole like trying to groove within a jazz band, then you might catch yourself playing the bass drum loudly. So what I would do is do then the same thing, about 20 minutes, just playing quarter notes and try to get the bass drum not to be heard. And back then what I would do is to actually put my computer in front of it, open GarageBand, and then just click record and see, because it is closer to the bass drum, see if I can hear the bass drum while I'm playing quarter notes and everything else. So what I'll then do is just play a little bit of quarter notes, two and four on the hi-hat, and then show you how the dynamic spectrum goes. Here we go, one, two, three, go. Now I couldn't hear anything, there is a microphone right next to the bass drum, so you might have heard something because I was trying to get right in the middle of the distance. So it wasn't like super close, but it also wasn't super far away. Now I'm gonna try to st st start very loudly and then work my way through softly feathering the bass drum. Three, four. So I'm gonna do the from I'm gonna start with the feathering very loudly while playing a bit of comping and then work my way through playing the bass drum softly feathering three four. Thank you. 
All right, so now the next point that you may encounter in your feathering journey is to um, play comping and then go back to feathering. I think some people get confused that while you're playing the bass drum super softly and then you wanna drop bombs with the bass drum that you then have to immediately follow back into the uh, feathering. I don't feel like this is the case, at least I, I don't know, I have watched people and really stared at that feet while they're playing and I don't feel like they do that as well. So for me, if I want to play an offbeat, then I'll wait one quarter note to then go back to feathering the bass drum, you know what I'm saying? So like, if I'm going like this, So the next possible easiness or the next possible introduction to uh, feathering, I'll take it. Like the next exit into feathering, I'll take it without really having to suffer too much. So what I sometimes see people doing is like if they wanna, if they wanna play an offbeat sort of accenting, then they, by the next quarter note or the next eighth note, they wanna be right there again with very soft. And uh, I don't know, I don't have the technique for this and also I haven't really seen that many people or no people at all doing this, so yeah. These are pretty much like the three levels of, of uh, feathering. And at one point I was practicing a lot to brushes because then I could get a clear sound. There's not much frequency. Frequencies like getting into the ear and sort of mixing what I hear if whether or not that is the bass drum, whether or not that is the snare or the cymbal. So I would practice to brushes at home in the apartment. So I was really constrained in <laughs> trying not to bother my uh, neighbors and really trying to play like the softest squatter note possible with the bass drum. And also like all, through all the tempo. So I felt what first, what first came to me was playing very fast because then I could like get the uh, um, distance between the head and the bitter super near. Um, but then the slower I got, more control I had to acquire. Um, I don't know exactly why that is. Perhaps for you it's a bit different. My, you may be, because you need more control than uh, the slower tempos is the first thing that comes to you. But you know, this is a thing that as most things in music, it doesn't come to us very easily. You just have to practice. And for me, I, you know, per perhaps I got like 20 minutes only with the bass drum and then 20 minutes with the set all together. And I don't know, doing this for two years, then I think you might get a good chance of uh, getting feathering really, really good. One last topic is, um, it is very frustrating when I am the audience and I hear people trying to feather um, and the bass drums turn out to be too loud um, because the bass drum takes so much frequency over the stage, it just bogs down the music. So you, we want to try to avoid this. Um, I would say, you know, just play as it is, like the best you can, but if you feel like you're bogging down the music, then just leave it alone and then reintroduce when you feel like things are getting a bit better, that we are performing well and you're recording yourself in the practice room playing feathering and you're actually not hearing it, but you know that you played it. What I would do is just uh, take the brushes and really press with the left hand so I really get only like the quarter note and see if my quarter note in the hand is together with the quarter note in the feet. So what I would do is try to be as precise as I can, not flaming any limb and try to get unison and obviously getting the bass drum to play super, super nice, soft. So let's go. One, two. All right, so let's talk about beaters now because it does make a difference. Right now I'm using a like a, a very fluffy, nice beater um, and that gives me a little bit of bottom end and like a, sort of a boomy sound, which I kind of like for this music. 
Um, I also got this one, which is a pretty aggressive, big-headed beater. And whenever I use this, I feel like it is just as okay to play feathering with, but this, the, but this is more of a, like, um, I don't know, groove, very directional kind of beater that doesn't work really that well when I'm playing the bass drum as high-tuned, as high-pitched as I am today. And this is usually the one that I started with. Um, I think I got one that is even harder than this because it does have a little bit of a cushion, but this is perhaps what you are most um, used to. Um, and this is where I actually learned to play uh, feathering. So it is a bit harder, um, but it really gives a sense. And I feel like if you're able to play feathering like this with this beater, then you're ready for anything. The other thing is, or the reason why I like like these fluffy beaters, either the Vader Bomber, I had the Vic Firth, I don't really like that much. This one I actually really do like, is for the sound, for the texture of the sound, not the easiness or the facility that it comes of uh, playing feathering. So it becomes, at one point, it becomes more of a texture question than actually a capability. So yeah, I would say, you know, try it out a bunch of beaters to the extent that you can do, um, but really do start with a more harder, perhaps a usual stuff such that if you go to clubs and you don't carry your own beater, you're able to play and sound that way um, in any kind of beater because you've practiced with this before for a long time. One, two, three. Go. Another thing that I just uh, came to my mind as far as feathering is what kind of styles you ended up feathering within jazz. So for me, it really is just a very small um, music subgenre of bebop. So we got the bebop, and whenever I'm playing that kind of stuff, then I'm always feathering. If the quarter note is super straight, I'm not like doing any tony, not much right hands. But then as soon as the music starts to get into a more modern state, then I'll leave out the, the feathering because there's so much syncopation going on, there's so much offbeat and so much broken time going on that I feel like, at least for my abilities and lack of abilities, I don't feel like it makes any sense of keep on playing the uh, the bass drum quarter note if everything is very like Jack DeJonacci, very right hand, like late Roy Haynes or even Tony Williams, that kind of stuff. I hope you guys are doing well with your um, feathering journey. Mm -hmm. 